All right, I'm back with our uh, PWG um, review. This time, reviewing "Don't Sweat the Technique." It's um, the most recent PWG show that came to DVD. This was in April third, and a lot of people are calling this like one of the best shows of all time. And I'm gonna tell you right now if it is or isn't. Okay, my my personal favorite from PWG is Steam Wolf. I'll tell you right now, this is not this is not better than Steve Wolf. But it was a good show. But let me try to um, make this quick and say, um, let me skip some some of the matches. I mean I'll talk I'll talk to them about them, but I'll go quick. So there's like four matches here that are clearly the, the top four matches. And there are four matches that are clearly like the, the bottom four matches. So let me go over the bottom four matches real quick. There's um Brian Cage versus Biff Busick. Give it three and a half stars. Um Good stuff. I mean, I'm glad I watched it. Nothing to complain about. It was good. Um, wasn't no, it wasn't like a four star classic or anything, but good fun opener. Um, the next match I want to talk about that's in the bottom four: World's Q's tag team, Kansas Ray and Joey Ryan versus the Beater Boys, Alex Reynolds and John Spider Killer Silver. And um, I don't know when I get this match. Ratings wise, I got my phone here. Um, give it three and a quarter stars, and it was not a bad match. I like the Beaver Boys; they're good, but I, don't know, I just don't like Joey Ryan. And for some reason, whenever Joey Ryan's in the match, you know that match gets a better rating usually because of him. And I don't know; I don't think he did terrible in this match or anything. But just you know, if it was Beaver Boys versus like oh, um, Young Bucks, this match probably would have been like four stars maybe. Because I, I think the Beaver Boys were really good. But I don't know. I mean, that said, um, I liked it a little bit more than other like World's Q's tag team matches I've seen in the past. Free of course, stars not bad. Um, I mean, this is probably the worst match, one of the worst matches of the show. So it's not bad. Worst, well, it's not bad for um, you know, for for being a bad match. It wasn't even that bad. But yeah, free of course, stars. That's all I'll say about it. It was good. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Um, next match I want to talk about um, ACH versus Tomasa Champa. Um, I had some high hopes for this match. I like ACH. I like Champa, and I don't know, just wasn't that good. I can't really remember any s spots in this match at all, other than the fact that they tended to have like a, a you know, a big basketball game in the beginning of the match. But yeah, uh, I forget who even wins. Um, not that I would say anyway. I'm trying to keep it spoiler free. But yeah, free star match. I mean, t you know, free star match by most people's standards would been it's like. Good match, but for PWG, three stars is like bad. So, and probably the worst match of the show, which I was hoping this wasn't going to be the first match, but I think it was. So, yeah. And then let's see. Then, in, um, let's see. Um, Love Gun, um, Chris Saban, and Matt Seidel versus Monster Mafia, Josh Alexander, and Ethan Page. Uh, first time seeing the Monster Mafia in PWG. I've seen them live at AEW like four times now. A good tag team. And follow them, follow them on Twitter, Josh Alexander. Ethan Page, you know, they're easily like the like the easiest wrestlers to talk to on Twitter. I don't, know, I don't really talk, tweet Jess Alexander too much, but Ethan Page, you get reply from him all the time. Anyway, this match was good. I gave three and um, three four stars. That's about the highest I'll go for this match. Can't go four stars. I'm um, being generous with three and three fourths. It was really good, but it just wasn't a four star match. Um, and the only reason I went, went that high is just because Ethan Page was just and Macho Mafia, they're just like really getting over his heels and really the crowd hated him and I thought it was great. So yeah, good tag team match. It wasn't crazy, but it was enjoyable. So now let's go to the top four matches. These top four matches, I actually rewatched them today just to see if um, my opinion changed. And for some matches they did change, some other matches they it didn't. Um, I think most of the matches I think I might I changed my rating. So all oh, 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 except for one. But yeah, let's go with the um, second match on the card. Speedball Mike Bailey versus Trevor Lee. This match was amazing. Unbelievable spots, crazy stuff. Like, didn't really slow down at all. It was just nonstop action. Really, they never they didn't give you a chance to get bored because this match was fun. Only complaint was that it, it was 11 minutes long. <laughs> I mean, really, one of the best 11, match, 11 minute matches I've ever seen. But just when you're start, starting to really get, enjoy it, it ends. Like, ah. Uh, so originally I gave it four and a half stars because I, I, I enjoyed it that much and then watched it again today and saying can't give it four and a half. 
only because I wanted like five more minutes, and I didn't get those five minutes. So because of that, can't go four and a half. Because because I know if, if they got five more minutes, it would be even better. And that's why I got to go with lower rating. Better than that, for a love minute match, it's really good. Um, next match, um, let's go with Tommy Ann versus Chris Hero. Now, this match, I've actually seen Tommy Ann wrestle before at AEW. Like, the match happened after this show aired. Uh, no, this match happened after this, show, after this show happened. Like, maybe like two weeks later at AEW. But I saw that match live, like before this DVD even came out. So, technically, I saw the AEW match first. That was in April 10th. This was April 3rd. So, um, exactly one week later, I saw Tommy Ann wrestle. He faced Tommaso Ciampa. And I thought that was a great match. And I can't really say which one's better. This one, I mean, the Ciampa match or the, um, the, the um, Chris um, Hero match. They're both very similar. Both, and they're both really good. Um, originally, I gave this match four stars. And I watched it again. And I, I bumped it to four and a quarter. It's a really good match. Just because um, the first half of the match is good. But I, I, I um checked the last six minutes. I, t I timed it. I didn't time it. I, you know, I like looked at the time when it started getting awesome, and then, then I, you know, counted to the end of the match. Um, the last six minutes, last six minutes of this match is just awesome. This is unbelievable stuff. So, really, the last six minutes is must see stuff. And just that alone, really took a took a match that was about three and a half stars, maybe three and a quarter, three stars and three quarters. All the way up to like four and a quarter. Those last six months were that awesome. Just really good. And he really took it to a second gear. That's what I was like looking for in wrestling matches. Can he take it to the next gear? And he definitely did take it to the next gear in this match. So yeah, I recommend see, check this one out. Um, so next match I want to talk about Adam, Andrew Everett versus Ricochet. Is that a match I had? originally gave four and a half stars, bumped it down to four and a quarter stars, but still a really good match. I mean. Just some like crazy spots here that um really cool. The problem was it's kind of inconsistent. Like they'll bust out a cool spot, have a cool exchange, and then it's, it slows down a little bit, and then uh, get exciting again. And in that second gear, it was it wasn't like um I don't know. It got to second gear kind of, but then it slowed down and it kind of. Ended a little shortly, in my opinion. It was like I was just getting into it, and then it ends. So I don't know. So again, it's not like you know, four four and a half stars to me is like a very special rating, and I try to like not give it out to like try not give it out too often if I can. And so I felt this just barely was like below four and a half stars, so four and a quarter stars, but still an amazing match. Ricochet is great. Andrew Everett, um, really the first match I've ever had of his on DVD, and. I t I've seen highlights of his um, his first match at um, Mystery Vortex too. He looks like a great wrestler, and I'd like to see more of him in the future. Ricochet, I've seen him many times, and he's awesome. So yeah, this is a good match too. And then the main event, um, Roderick Strong versus Zack Saber Jr. Um, a lot of people give his match like four and three four stars. I don't think anyone's giving it five stars, but like a lot of high range for his match. I give it four and a quarter stars, and that was my original rating. And I watched it again, kept that rating. And um, I don't know, it's a good match. Um, just couldn't really get into it that much. And what the killer for me was that so they had some great near falls. But the problem was um, PWG is a tape show, and you know it's it's like impossible to see PWG live unless you're actually in the arena because they don't put on t TV or in or pay review or anything. So I actually knew like um, it was hard to avoid spoilers. So I knew like who won this match when the when the match after match happened originally and. So watching this match on TV, I knew like who's gonna win, and because of that, I couldn't, you know, the, the near there's a lot of near falls in this match. I just couldn't fall for them. I couldn't like, I don't know. When you see a near fall, and you know the guy's gonna get out, or you're not surprised kicked out. It kind of ruins a little bit. So I don't know, that that hurt the match a little bit for me, and I'm sure people in the live crowd probably tell probably tell it's awesome, and you know they should feel that way because you know they did not know what was gonna happen. Neither did I, but I knew who was going to win, so I kind of didn't know what was going to happen. Like, I know when someone was in submission, I knew he was not going to tap out or something. But overall, it was a great match, I thought. Really good. Uh, first time really seeing Zack Zaber Jr. on uh, DB, and he looked pretty, really good. I want to see more of his matches. But overall, it was a um, good sh really good show. 
I mean, it's, it's got. I get four four star matches. Anytime a show gets four four star matches, that's automatic recommendation for me. So I don't know where I would rank it among the best PWG shows. Um, probably the one of the best ones I've seen, like um, from like the 2015 show. I don't know how many 2014 shows I've seen. I've seen a few 2013 shows. A lot of, my, a lot of show, like, good shows I like for POG are from like 2011 to 2013. So past 2013, this might be one of the best ones I've seen from year 2014 or 2015. Uh, um, but yeah, great show. I mean, I didn't think it was the best show ever, but do I recommend the show? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the top four matches are great, and two of the bottom three match, two of the bottom four matches are you know matches I'd recommend seeing and only two matches like I would say like I'll need to see again so yeah thanks for watching bye